I've seen a mirror all day. <laughs> Better than I thought it was. So we'll have three pouches going this way, and then the other tray piece that's going to drop in there. It'll fold over the edge, fold over this edge. Pretty handy spot for a fire extinguisher. Got one yeah. Over here too. And then potentially build something that kind of fits into this. Okay. That would have a zipper that would go around it like that, and then fold down so you could get into it. One of those wooden things that you put your onions and potatoes in, kind of, it's got that funky shape like that. We need to get the console because that's going to be the most used space. Glove compartment, it's got okay. some high use to it. The Platinum Series. I want to be able to see the I'm art. It in. Art inside. They could be a little wider, but I think once they're full of Run stuff. Run in the other direction. The other direction? Mm -hmm. So what we've got here is this is one of the new pieces we've been playing with. This is obviously the center console of a 2017 taco. So if you have a generation that fits those numbers, I forget what they are. This is for you. So what we've done is we've made this little this little thing that drops in this little tray, the taco tray. Oh my gosh, it's got a name, the taco tray. So it drops in the top of here and folds down over the edges. On one side, it's got a little piece of Velcro so you can put some attachment stuff to it. On the other side, it's got some slots for pens, miscellaneous, things like that. And it keeps all the crumbs and stuff. So when you put your half-eaten granola bar in your center console, which I have done more than once, all the crumbs stay in here. You want to take them out, you just pull them out dump the crumbs out and bam life is good right a flash of brilliance so not only does the taco pouch fit the taco to fit your glove compartment for your tacos your taco gloves it fits your thing over here your console for your taco kit it also fits the door pocket like a glove i think he's gonna like it at first but he's kind of picky so i wouldn't be surprised if like three minutes later he's telling us what all is wrong with everything and how he wants it changed Roasted! Okay. This is part of the grill of an ARB Summit Series bumper. Front bumper, winch, lights, and tomorrow we'll knock out the sliders and the fender bars. Yes, I don't was... know about any uh, carpool karaoke, but... Um... Oh, we'll get, we'll get Ren in on the carpool karaoke. <laughs> <laughs> We're back at OK Four Wheel Drive. And we're starting on the front bumper first, but uh, part of the process is always laying this stuff out to make sure we've got everything where we need it when we need it. And um, it just makes it easier to find stuff. Um, yeah, should be a fun day. All Ooh. right. Have you done an integrate bumper, front bumper on the on trucks yet? Yeah. Yeah, probably, huh? Yeah. They're gonna make me take the grill off I just took off. Which is okay. I think the thing just pulls straight off of there, doesn't it? Yeah, it's just clips. All nice. right. So this is a Tacoma planner. This is um, Tacoma engineered this for aftermarket accessory builds. They knew you would take it off. Um, and with sustainability in mind, um, you can actually uh, plant or start your, harden off your plants, so to speak, before you drop them in the garden. It's perfectly designed to start start some seedlings. 
This here is a window hanger. <laughs> oh, it hangs off the window. It's a good beat. Good rhythm. <laughs> We're gonna have a pretty heavy lo electrical load on this truck this year. Uh, so we reached out to Shane at Genesis Off-Road. We found one of his YouTube videos. Shane actually got tied into building Toyota dual battery systems after he was at Expo West in like 2016 or something like that. This is a new kit. It's on market already. We're going to be working on that soon at some point and uh, we'll walk you through that process. We've got the OEM bumper off. We've got all the parts laid out. We're going to prep the OEM bumper um, for cutting. Guess what? <laughs> okay. All right. The front and the back of the truck need a very dedicated recovery point. This is not um, a hook welded to the front of a bumper. Um, this is straight to the frame, load tested, so we have a good solid recovery point on the front of the truck as well. You'd think we'd have this down by now. Um, you know, personally, I think this is my is it second or third bumper that we've done, and I still don't know what I'm doing. We're gonna try to put it together while it's off the truck, naturally, because that's gonna be a lot easier than trying to lift the winch into it. Let's get to work. Uh, all the bolts are good. Uh, we're gonna relocate the control pack, throw it on the truck, and uh, call it a day and go have some beer and more pizza. Do you remember this step of the process? Did you have to drill out both sides or just one side? So while Ren is working on cutting our OEM bumper, I'm gonna be installing the ARB recovery point. And then, and then, and then. Pretty easy when the bumper is not on there. You just a couple things you just have to remove. Oh geez. Cool. Nice. Good work. Voted most likely to cut straight lines. <laughs> <laughs> It's got weight. <laughs> yeah. You weren't lying. Alright. You ready to go ahead and put it on? Whew. You good? Gabby, what are we doing, dude? Huh? What's going on? I actually have no idea. Ren just came out and started this beast, and then all I did was hop in. So I have no clue what we're doing. It'll be fun. Where to, Mr. Jason? <laughs> yeah, so that's pretty much it. We're in this CJ on the side of a hill right now. I'm sitting on plastic bags and uh, just holding on. <laughs> A little hungover from last night, but this will wake you up real quick. Okay. This is um, manual labor while you drive. See? <laughs> if you ever go to prison, you'll be popular. <laughs> <laughs> Good work, dude. Hey, thanks, man. <laughs> Fun. That was fun. That was fun. That's you gotta so take fun. another shit now, huh? You gotta take another shit now. Oh, probably. <laughs> probably. So we're back in the shop this morning. First thing, the bumper's on, the winch is on, the lights are on. We're moving on to side rails and fender rails. I'm hoping to get in a dual battery system, and we should get started. We have a whole bunch of goodies here from uh, Hondo Garage. 
The Perfect Squeeze cell phone holders, these are actually really cool, right? The whole system is actually CNC'd by them. Um, and it has this little button that you can push to close down on your device, and then this turn to squeeze it. It's super solid, there's no vibration. We actually have an iPad mount in the truck, but we're gonna be putting some of these on the rest of the bench in the truck. Um, so we can put the Garmin and Reach up on the dash and we can put the Warren remote up on the dash. Let's get started and put some of this stuff on. We are installing the fender rails and rail slides, um, or steps, on the truck. A massively large, heavy slider. <laughs> this designed to destroy anything it contacts. <laughs> Seek and destroy. Two nylon ox. Nine locks. <laughs> Nine lawn knocks. Thank you, Adam. You're welcome. Well, there we go. Okay. So the instructions call for a friend. A friend. <laughs> we have four of them. <laughs> Kick it up, maybe. What well, we're making more room here. Um, by kind of cocking this thing a little mm -hmm. bit, but I don't know if it's supposed to be like symmetrical and like let's, square. Let's pull that battery out real quick. I want to think if you get it. So this yeah. is a hole, I believe, right? Yep. Do you want to put the tray back in just to make sure? Yeah. Six holes drilled and the plus nuts. Those are in there and let's just hope everything's aligned the way it needs to be. Generally, every thing is lining up. It's actually not even touching the hose there. Um, so I think we're good. Let's get the batteries in and get this thing bolted down. Okay, so we have all six bolts in place. Um, it's important not to tighten these too tight because you'll pull the little brass fitting out of the plus nuts. So we just turned them a little bit and uh, Sam here, who's with us today, um, kind of gave this thing a little jiggle here and uh, it's, it's fine, it's locked in place. We're gonna loosely put everything on, get it positioned, anchor down, then tighten everything up and we should be done. All right. What do you think, Ren? Nice. Very nice. Looks good. Yeah, it does look good. Had to move, uh, move the batteries around a little bit, but it's a super solid system and it's not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I worked at uh, Circuit City in my high school days. Did you? <laughs> Doing car radios and remote starts. Nice. And that's why I hate remote starts. <laughs> that's a cluster. Oh, right? it's a mess, dude. It's an absolute disgusting mess. So then you left that and then came and started working here at the well, shop. Well, then I went now. to school. And then after school, I went to Toyota. And then when I was like, 20, I started working here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome. In the shop for about four years, and then I did sales on Saturday, and then people would ask for me during the week, so yeah. I got moved out into sales full time, and now I do AlluCab, which is pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty neat. So these are the mounts for the vents. There's these little tabs that turn up, and you just use an Allen key to tighten them down. Um, and then they adapt to ram mounts. We're gonna show you some of those little pieces of how it kind of comes together. This is what it looks like installed. Um, you know, you do lose functionality to be able to spin, you know, your vents up and down, but this is kind of how it works here. So see this little dial that's up on top? What we do is you loosen that a bit and then the system just kind of comes out. All in all, it's a really good system. I really like it. That's why we are going to now have one of these on each of our vents. This is a Midland portable power station, and we're going to be using these on our trips to keep our equipment charged. It's got everything that you need, um, USB, your 12 volt powers and things like this. So we can actually um, go straight to using this as a power source, as a battery charging source. And it's got nice little neat places that you can kind of store your equipment as it's charging. But yeah, excited to be using this um, on the trips this year. All right, we're halfway through the day. Come with me, we'll show you what we've done so far.
Um, we have the sliders mounted up and um, these are something to be thoroughly impressed about. Um, how they actually mount to the cross member into the frame in several different places with U-bolts. Um, it's actually providing more structure and support to the frame in itself, which is pretty awesome. But now what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on the fender rails. And Ren is prepping for drilling holes in a brand new bumper that we've never used before. So we've drilled holes in the back of a $30,000 truck and we're gonna put holes in a bumper, $1,500 bumper that we've never even used before. So um, at the end of the day, this is kind of what it's gonna look like. So here are the fender bars, fender rails, and they slide in here like so. And when we're done, this is what it's going to look like. And, it, and actually, the, the Integrate actually looks really good and matches really well with the um, with the blacked out um, plastic fenders here. So this truck is shaping up to be something awesome, um, and it's going to get a lot of use this year. So let's drill into this bumper. Come down. We're too high. We're too high? According to this. I can turn it down. It depends on how you set the bumper too, right? For sure. That's why everything's like floating in space. And that needs to be 85 millimeters? We have three and, three and seven sixteenths is where we're at. Ren said that he was confident that he that this would this was going to be spot on perfect I heard, perfect. I, I thought I heard the word uh, I think in there. I I didn't hear that. Oh, okay. I heard complete confidence um, in Ren's ability to execute this. We left OK Four Wheel Drive shop just about an hour ago. Uh, now we're actually stopping at Cabela's for a little bit. This is a pretty sizable Cabela's, so we're just gonna kind of browse around for a little bit, uh, see what they got. Try not to waste, you know, too much time in there because that's easy to do. Can you go in it? Yep. <laughs> oh, this is just a big bucket of cigarette butts. Yeah. <laughs> this place is insane. It's just a bunch of like sports gear and stuffed animals there is however if you want to look like an underpaid security guard here's my friend brian his pants don't really fit evidently this is deer country and there's a lot of stuffed deer in here i don't think you're supposed to touch i can touch reginald see i don't think you're supposed to touch yeah well you're being touched What's this guy talking about here? I don't think he knows what he's talking about, but he's got a pretty bad neck crank. So we are on the road on our way back from New Jersey. Awesome weekend again, and I don't know what that just was. <laughs> I just spit everywhere. Uh, but we're on our way home. We've got the OK four wheel drive camper behind us, and uh, we're taking it back to have a car for our MSX trip, and uh, the gears are getting installed up at AK4-wheel drive on the MSO Tacoma. So um, we'll catch you next week.